it's you know you should have been a newscaster you would have really enjoyed that do you remember that little news image i created really quickly in our group chat like three years ago <laughs> I think I have that saved on my phone somewhere. I seriously do. That was, that was brilliant. I don't know what you were talking about. It I forgot the topic too, but... It was something like really not serious and you made right. this very serious newscaster. <laughs> it was fun. That Good was times. Hilarious. I love that. Good times. Shout out to the chat that used to be like a thousand people in it. <laughs> Shout out to everybody who used to be our friends. Exactly. Um, our COVID friends. Hello, my so, friend. Good evening, I, my friend. Good evening. <laughs> I have, I have some new news. I'm okay. trying something. Okay, so I love when you try things. I keep seeing these things around, and I saw some at the store, okay. and then that reminded me that they exist, and so then I was like, okay, I'll order some. So, you know how like. There's this whole, I don't know if you get like a thousand, I don't know if I drink too much. So then I get like a thousand ads that are like adaptogen, um, alcohol free uh -huh. drinks right. or something like that. Like the right. euphoric or whatever it's called, all that stuff. So I got these recess. Paloma, grapefruit Paloma. Uh, so it's a, these are non-alcoholic. I'm currently sipping on a ginger lime mule. And it's, it's, it's a lovely, I'm still going to drink, but it's lovely. <laughs> you know, I'm going to get a shirt and put that on there for you. I'm still going to drink. I still going to drink. That. But like, it's just kind of nice because sometimes I don't actually want to like consume alcohol, but I want to yeah. drink. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. So like, this is nice. You know what I've noticed? I don't know what an adaptogen is supposed to do for me. I don't know. But something I like this. healthy. I put mushroom adaptogens in my in my drinks, and I don't know what the heck it's supposed to do, but um, I put them in there. <laughs> but I think you it's know, like functional medicine crap. The only thing I believe in yes. is, is 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 the magnesium. I believe in magnesium. I swear by the magnesium. But you, they you do know make what? they make a magnesium like sleepy time kind of version of these. Really? Drinks. Well, here's they're what not I've been like noticing: fashioned like a cocktail, but they're fashioned like a like a wind down drink. Right. Like, with magnesium and ashwagandha and all that. I find it interesting that over the, I don't know, last, let's say five to seven years, there's been like two things happening in the beverage industry, people creating more um, non-alcoholic beverages, um, especially geared towards wine drinkers. And then there's also been so many craft cocktail businesses that have been launched like those mm -hmm. two things have been really big and they're continually growing in the beverage industry which is mm -hmm. i find really interesting and like it's just nice it's just so it's it's good good, good flavor good taste it tastes good okay and i don't know there was what i think what got me is there was one lady and i wish i knew what she was drinking because she was like this has got me all kind of like ooh, not drunk but like she yeah. felt something and I'm like, well, what is this lady drinking? Huh. Cause I don't feel anything when I drink these. I just interesting. I just pee. Well, you know. <laughs> Story of my life. Story of my life. I'm still drinking no coffee. So I've got this uh uh this chai tea latte from Starbucks. I do like a chai tea coffee. But here's yeah. what I don't understand. Okay, so for you and the couple other people that have been in our comment section saying that they also have given up coffee. Really? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang you... on, hang on, hang on. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Before you go any further, I did not give it up. I'm just taking a brief little recess <laughs> from coffee. I just want to make that very clear. I'm but, just doing a little experiment. Okay, so my question about your experiment and people who also experiment with not having coffee. Um, you still have black tea. You still um, have things with caffeine? Because if you I do, don't then what have was the point of not having coffee? I don't have any black tea. But like chai tea is usually made with black tea. But I don't drink that every day. Okay. 
Like this is just a special special thing. And like downstairs in my little cabinet of, of teas, I don't have any. Black I feel tea. like you're like you could you quit smoking, and I'm like okay, but Naomi, you're like well, I don't vape every day. Well, I, I mean, it's true. It's true. Look, I I was missing out on a fall drink, and I needed a fall drink. So I mean, I'm not. You yeah. do you, whatever makes you happy. I'm not judging yeah. you. I just have a question. Yeah, yeah. But I don't have any black tea downstairs that I make every day at home. So. And now that I'm seven weeks in, I just, I don't feel any differently. So this experiment might may end soon. Like, I don't feel better or worse. I feel the exact same. Because everything's still on fire and the world still sucks. <laughs> well, there's that. There's that. Yeah, but I was curious, like, would I feel any differently? And you know, I, but I, I feel the same. And I feel like six full weeks, like that's enough time to see or feel yeah. something. Uh, I feel the same. So I don't know what that means, but that's where I am. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. what have you been reading? Everything Under the Sun, actually. Um, one of the books I have in rotation is The Black Company by Glenn Cook. Oh, you finally started that. Finally, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And um, about uh, 140 pages in. And there's been some epic little fights with gross stuff happening. We've been introduced to the the soul catcher and someone who goes by the lady who is sort of evil. I don't know what's going on with her. It hasn't been revealed yet, but there's a lot happening and I'm, I'm here for the ride. I really like how um, this is written. I I'm enjoying the characters and I can't wait to see where this goes. I'm kind of excited about getting into the rest of the series. So I'm happy that I finally cracked this open and got started. And this is book one in the Black Company series by Glenn Cook. I think. Oh, I can't. It's see just the, books the trilogy, over here, but... isn't it? Oh no, no, no! I have all the books. I think it's like eight or nine of them. Remember when I was hunting these down for like two years? Didn't and then I like, get it the... as a bind up? Isn't it only three books? You, you have a bind up of the first three books. That's correct. Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I just see. I have the individual ones, but um, I like it so far. I really do. That makes like sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess if we're going to talk about books, series we've been meaning to start and haven't, hadn't gotten to yet, mm -hmm. I did finish Red Rising. I saw some of your posts on the socials. And I'm not sold. Okay. Um, but I'm not giving up just yet. Okay. Uh, because... It was posted on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know why he relies on the like sexual assault of women so much as a way to be like these guys are really evil and they mm -hmm. they just keep taking these ladies. And then I'm not understanding this whole like with the reds. And our, our little friend, Darrow, and, mm -hmm. like, he, he, like, I'm not understanding his morals around slavery, because he seems to, like, take people and then kind of make them kind of slaves, but, like, with slaves with rights. Like, I'm not understanding right. his, his morality around it, because um, he's, like, so you know, I'm doing this for my people, like, we're gonna take these people down, but then he's kind of also doing the same thing, and I don't know if that's the point, that, like, you kind mm -hmm. of end up being corrupted by them as well a little bit, but, like, I am enjoying the violence in general, minus the, like, multiple sexual assaults on women. Right. It was just a lot. Like, this, it was, like, yeah. you could have done other things. You didn't just have to keep going back and beating that dead horse. Right. Um, but I do hear that it gets better. Mm -hmm. So I'm 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 in it. Roger and I will are reading the next one this month. Um, we read this one together, and mm -hmm. we both kind of felt the same way. I think I was slightly more negative than he was. I'm not sure. We're kind of like we're in the middle of the road. We're not really sure what to think about this just yet. Yeah. 
Um, the writing isn't like bad and I would still totally, totally hit the author. Like he's hot. For sure. Yeah. Smash. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, for real. Uh, I, I don't, yeah, I don't know yet. Yeah. Also, why do so many books have to be Hunger Games adjacent? When did I don't this start? Know. Did it start with Hunger Games? Or is Hunger was, Games just the one that we like like launched off on? Like everybody I like, don't think that's Hunger it. Hunger Games is the origin of that type of story. But I, it, I do not think that. You it know has, what? I'm I'm gonna pose this question in my fantasy sci-fi Facebook group that, that I'm in. Please, because they I would will like know. to know. Those folks are hardcore, they will know. They will know. Now I have I so on one of my previous McKay runs this year, I did run across book four. So I need to reread books one and two and then continue on because I would like to finish and, and catch up. Well, I I ordered book two. So that arrived um, end of last week. But, you know, last week for me was. Yeah, it was a week, but I did. It was a week. <laughs> It, they've all been like that. I'm very yeah. overwhelmed and stressed. I had an I had like an absolute like breakdown. Life this meltdown. Morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally melted down this morning. So um yeah, it was fun. It's been a fun morning. It's been fun. It's yeah. been fun around there. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, so we'll keep going with Red Rising and see how I feel about it. Yeah. Um I was glad that when I posted my little reel asking or short asking about the whole treatment of women in this book and how because nobody seems to ever talk about that and i think that's the thing that or when they do it's been drowned out by everybody being like i love this series mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i'm like how is everybody handling this like how are you mm. how are you processing this like as and because most of the people that i know that love this book are women yeah so i'm like how are you processing this or did you just is it how did you get past it if you did so it's been interesting a lot of people are like it just gets better like stick with it like yeah fine and then people are like no i just literally i couldn't and that was my biggest problem with this series and i don't like it interesting i don't um, even remember i think i i think i just glazed over it because i don't remember that sticking even sticking out to me like as like anything when i first read it isn't that so interesting yeah but i was also reading it with somebody else so like and we were both very hesitant going into the book um as I usually am with things that people really love and mm -hmm. all I ever hear about is positive things because yeah, I'm scared. Uh, yeah. So I think it was like a different approach. I didn't just like pick it up. Maybe if I had just picked it up and read it, I wouldn't have been reading it as critically maybe. Yeah. And I did just pick it up and read it. This was what, like three years ago. Mm -hmm. Um. Which is why, again, this is why I have to reread them because it's been like three years and I don't remember enough to just pick up where I left off. Yeah. So I have to read them again. But I do think it's interesting. I think, like, the first book is sloppy a little bit. It like, is. It's very sloppy, but I think it's his first book ever. So mm -hmm. that's fine. Like, I, that's fine. I um, thought book two was a little tighter. Like, it just, it feels like it's weird. Like they get to the school, then suddenly they're in these war games, and you're like, "Well, how did we get here?" Like, right. Also, why? Why are there grown ass adults watching children watching mm -hmm. children do this? Why is he six? Why is he sixteen and married <laughs> and so in love with his wife? I have so many questions about <laughs> like, this. Like what? <laughs> like i i understand that you could live in a dystopian world where yeah. like um people do things really young because everybody only lives to maybe 30 because you're like mm -hmm. down the mines or whatever right like i yeah. get that part but it it was so everything was so front-loaded in that piece of the story and that he's pining after his wife the entire time and it's yeah. like but like we barely saw her yeah yeah and you're 16 right <laughs> also, why why are they so heavily coded as like the Irish? Like it's so I might have to watch that. Uh <laughs> Naomi, I have so many questions. You know my guy that I love Mike's book reviews. He interviewed mm -hmm. um Pierce 
um, some weeks ago. I may have to watch that interview. I'm just curious about what he's gonna, what he says, what he, what they talk about. But um, yeah, everyone does say that the series gets better and it gets darker. I'm here for the darker. You know, yeah. I'm here for the darker. Get it darker. Yeah. Maybe don't violate quite as many women's bodies, or if you do, can you balance it? Like I need right balance right. in that. Um, and like a rationale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, this was so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. You finally got there. Red Rising. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I'm definitely, I'm definitely on the. Okay, I'm getting my series red. You know, I you know, this is the last quarter of the year. Like I'm not messing around. Like the hunger is real. The reading hunger is real. I don't even know what I'm doing. September was like the worst reading month. Like I was mm. they didn't even like everything. I didn't read all that much. I had a pretty well good for me. Month. I didn't yeah. read all that much. I think I'm burnt out from Booker, but Yeah, you went hard with Booker. Um <clears throat> you went real yeah. hard. I didn't even yeah. attempt to do it. It's cool though. All right. What are we here for? All right. Well, what we be doing? So, uh, November's around the corner, everyone. Mm -hmm. And you know what that means. It's turkeys, nonfiction, (laughs) (laughs) and pie, and also nonfiction November. And um, we thought we would share with you some books that we would like to get to during the month of November. We'll see how that goes because last November I had some things I wanted to read and they're right back on this list this year. So there's that. One day. One day. When I have all the time in the world. So like when I'm like 70, we should go through all the episodes and talk about it. So I can make a list of all the books that we said we were going to read and never did. Right. Look. (laughs) You know me. I'm not even a TBR person. I know me. I'm not a monthly TBR person. Uh, I have to go with the mood. But I am in the mood to read these. I mean, this, there's some exciting... They're all exciting, actually. But It was know. kind of nice to go back through my nonfiction shelves. Mm-hmm. And to go... Because my nonfiction shelves are, like, double stacked. So I haven't seen the back stack in a little while. So when I pull them minute, back... Wait a minute. You do I, the... Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I, uh, I do that because my like nonfiction that. books are just, there's too many of them. They don't really have like a true home. They just are in that case downstairs that I have. Um, yeah. So I double stack them. But if I don't, if I start spreading them out, then I won't know where they are. So I try to just shove everything into that set of bookshelves. Mine are basically in the attic with all the other books. I just had to make a decision like nonfiction just can't be out except for these handful that I feel like. I'm really actually going to read this year. The rest are in the attic. There's just too many. I have many. object permanence issues. If I stick things in the attic, they will just rot. Wow. I will never remember that they're up there once they go up there. <laughs> Unless I have to go up and do something in the attic, which I never have to do. Right. And I'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe I have that. <laughs> right. Yeah. I do need to go in there, though. There are two books I want to get out of there, but I'm just dreading it. But I do have my handy-dandy spreadsheet, so I know exactly which do box have to go to. And that's Maybe why I need, spreadsheets I need Naomi rule. to make everything in my life a spreadsheet <laughs> so that I can go look at it. I need, to, I need to really beef up my Notion game. There's a lot of things. I got more Notion boards to make for my life hub. There's, yeah, I, I have, have there's a couple. A lady, I got to, yeah. There's a lady that put out, um, like, things you should do around your house, like, monthly and Ooh. seasonally and like um like maintenance kind of thing yes so i need to make that those checklists into for notion sure. boards so that then i can have checklists for the yeah anyway that's i've abandoned my notion the last month but i need to get back and get it together yeah. so anyway nonfiction november we nonfiction got november. some books we, we do got some books all right, do you want to go wanna... first? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start. My first three are, and I'm not doing three right now, but I'm just saying my first three are gonna be mm-hmm. the ones that I wanted to get to last year. Is it that papyrus? I did not get to? 
You know it is. That's one of them. Let me just break that one out then. Yeah. I didn't yeah. bring those up here because I still haven't read them either. And I was like, I'm not doing this again. Oh, I'm, I'm shaming myself. I'm shaming myself right now. This is me. And I just putting myself saw somebody on blast. read that. Somebody just read that recently or was posting about it recently. And I was like, I feel shame. It's cool. It's all right. So yes, Papyrus, The Invention of Books in the Ancient World by Irene Viejo translated, I think, from the Spanish. Um, yes, from the Spanish by Charlotte Whittle. And mm -hmm. um, again, this why. was mm -hmm. on my list, Annalisa's list last year. Kanaf was so kind to send us both copies of this. And um, I, I will be reading it this year. Okay, that's happening. All right. All right. Papyrus. Also, like, this cover really is just so beautiful. The whole book is it's just It's a really, really beautiful book. Gorgeous. Which, you know, a book about books and, like, physically about books, like, yes, books, um, should be beautifully made. And it's a beautiful Absolutely. book. Absolutely. Um, so I have been putting this on my TBR for, and I think it's going to be, like, three months running now. And uh, I don't think I'm really going to ever get to it till November. Oh, um yes. Which is kind of appropriate because I think that's like the Remembrance Day for World War One, and that is Vera Britton's uh, Testaments mm. of Youth, which I did. I mean, I read the first like that bit, uh, right. and then I've been distracted by other things. Um, so this is basically a memoir about a lady, Vera Britton, and um, her. She was a nurse during World War One, mm -hmm. um, but it's like her whole life, and it's supposed to be amazing. There's a BBC miniseries I think about it as well, or mm. a movie. Um, that's supposed to be very good, but it, um, it's supposed to be amazing. And it really like captures this sort of lost generation and takes you from like the time right before world war one, world war one. And of, of course the aftermath of that and how that affects like her, her life, this generation of young people and, um, like the world in general and it's supposed to be amazing so i just need to get oh. to it i think my problem was in the beginning it's very difficult for me to relate to because i am not british and it's it. i don't know if everybody was aware of that but i'm not <laughs> and okay. it's very difficult for me to like understand certain things yeah because i feel like they're so rooted in like British culture particularly like where she lives in in the mm. UK and where she grew mm -hmm. up so like I, I don't get some of the references to like place and things um and it kind of just washes over me so I just kind of have to like I think barrel through this beginning yeah. bit until I get to the more like things that I more I know because they're more historical like on a global scale than just like on a little national scale <laughs> yes yes uh-huh I know what you mean you know what I, know I mean? What you mean. <laughs> yep. Yep. We all speak the same language, but I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> exactly. It's like, come again? All right. All right. All right. Um, again, number two book of putting myself on blast. Teaching White Supremacy by I Donald think book three. Yokovan. <laughs> Uh, America's democratic ordeal and the forging of our national identity. Again, uh, Pantheon, thank you so much for giving sending this to Alyssa and I. Right, you got this as well, yes? Because we were going to read this. It's going to happen, okay? It's going to it's going to happen. Is it? It's happening. It's God dang it! It's happening. Shoot. <laughs> it will happen one it will day happen. before I die. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I know I've talked about some of these before. I think I don't I don't know in what way. Um, but I found this sort of in the back <laughs> shelf. How to be authentic. It's um Simone de Beauvoir and the quest for fulfillment. So it's sort of talking about the philosophy of Simone de Beauvoir. Uh -huh. So I thought this would be really interesting. Um yeah. and it kind of talks about like how it replies to modern life and you know, I've been on a men's sock down with the patriarchy kick, so. Rah, rah! Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, yeah! Yeah, mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you hold that up? I want to see that cover a little closer. I like, oh, I, ooh, 
there is something very sophisticated and like artsy about that cover. I am it's a good it. cover. I it like is. it. Um so hopefully this will be interesting. Like hopefully yeah. I'll like it. Like it's well done. So. And which um uh, what was the book you read by her? I think it's not the one that I have. I read it inseparable, but right. I have uh I wanna read more of her work. Um I only own two of her books. I only own that as an ebook. I might have Woman Destroyed on ebook. I just got too. that from um really want to read some that. publisher. Read that. Can't remember now. But I was blown away by Inseparable. It was really, really good and very curious to see mm. what the rest of her writing is like. Okay. All right. Okay. In my f- final um putting myself on blast book is Water, a biography. Say. I was going to say water. Is it water? Right. By Giolio Boccoletti. Um, very excited to read this. And I will read it this year. It's happening. Okay. Um, yeah. I just want to read it. Right? <laughs> no, no. It's happening. I want to read a little bit um, of the back. Uh, it says, uh, he describes how these societies were made possible by sea level changes from the last glacier melt, incisively examining how this type of farming led to irrigation and multiple cropping, which in turn led to a population explosion and labor specialization. We see with clarity how irrigation structure informs social structure, inventions such as the calendar spring from agricultural necessity, how in ancient Greece, the communal ownership of wells laid the groundwork for a democracy, how Greek and Roman experiences with water security resulted in systems of taxation and how the modern world as we know it began with a legal framework for the development of water infrastructure. Mm. And you have this one too, yeah? I do. Okay. I do have this one. Oh, yeah. I'm 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 now confused. Is this not a real book or not? Oh, you don't know if it's not fiction or not? Now I'm confused, but we're going to go to this one. And okay. I, you know, like when you're reading something again and you've had it forever in your mind as something and now you're like, well, now I don't know. Been there. Anyway, so I have been wanting to read this for a very long time and I it's finally time. Um, this is How Not to Kill Yourself, a portrait of the suicidal mind. Mm. Um, because I just, I think this is going to be a fascinating read and as a stressy and depressy person myself, um, yeah. I just find it really interesting to look into how our brains work. Um, I will say, I'll read the back just so people have an idea. The last time Clancy Martin, who's the author, tried to kill himself was in his basement with a dog leash. It was one um, It was one of more than 10 attempts throughout the course of his life. In How Not to Kill Yourself, Martin chronicles his multiple suicide attempts and argues that for the vast majority of suicides, an attempt is the culmination of a host of long-standing issues. Um, Martin draws on great writers who've detailed their experiences with suicide. David Foster Wallace, Yin Yi Lee, somebody whose name I can't pronounce, and some others, explores what philosophy has to say um, both for and against suicide and the uses and uses the experience of people he's met across the years to create a work that powerfully gives voice to what many um, have long f- found incomprehensible. He also shows those presently struggling with suicidal thoughts that they are not alone, that this desire to kill oneself, like other self-destructive desires, is almost always temporary and avoidable. Mm. And like, I feel like this is like one of those things we don't talk about. Like, think about like how we have to change our words on social media and like be like we ruined the lives ourselves, so that you know people if people don't want to talk about this. And I think this yeah. is one of those things people should be talking about. And I also don't know. I, I know why there's taboo and stigma around it, but I, I don't know why we keep having taboo and stigma around it. Like, I think it's very yeah. important to um, be frank and honest. Like when I have a patient, I have to very frankly and honestly ask questions. Like I'm not allowed to push these foot around the question. That's You're not like, how you do are it. You, you do you feel like it. you want to harm yourself? Like, yeah. Like, do you have a plan? Do you, yeah. are you going, do you want to do this? Like, have you tried? And you have right. to be very upfront about it. And I feel like in society, we don't do that. Like regular society where we, we don't, and we don't understand things. We don't understand like whether it's, we might understand it intellectually. Some of us, but I don't know if we 
um, understand it in a way where we're accepting it and really like acting on it. We're like, right. when your super depressed friend starts acting really happy, that's when you should maybe check on them. Right. Cause they might be happy cause they figured out a way like out. To, to just exactly. And also just like understand that a lot of times there's a lot of pain. And so it's just like, there's a lot of stuff behind it. And I think mm -hmm. especially for people who have people in their lives that struggle with, um, wanting to stay alive mm -hmm. I, I it i feel like it might be really a great insight into why because i feel like there's always this question of why like you know why did they do this why do they feel this way why did this happen did i do something and like i feel like the more we talk about it oh the yeah, better I, you know i feel like i want to read that book now you I, should. I do have someone close to me that has always struggled with that so i would i may have to get that book I was just online recently and there was this there was this debate about uh saying they didn't they were saying that they no longer think that it's appropriate to say committing suicide. Um and there was this whole conversation about that because they were saying that by saying that oh so and so committed suicide it's like it makes them seem like uh like a bad person it was a very interesting conversation yeah. you're not a bad person right but i hadn't heard that argument before that was my There's first time like a ton of guilt around even having those feelings like yeah because you feel like you're bad like you're you're broken or bad and right. like you think you may be doing people a favor by just going away and no longer being their problem there's just it's so nuanced it's a lot yeah. it's so nuanced i think i'm gonna have to buy that book do yeah and thank you to pantheon for sending it to me i'm sorry i'm so late but yeah. i've been um i've actually been waiting for the audiobook for a really long time from the library it's been mm -hmm. several months and then i found that another library had it up for like six weeks so it was like oh okay. <laughs> that'll be in time hopefully for nonfiction november so um if not because I, I need to be able to switch back and forth between formats. So yeah, um, yeah, I, I think this one will be really big. I feel like okay. I'm always bringing like, let's talk about death. <laughs> I mean, that is a part but I of think it's, life. It, it is not something people like to talk about. And it's something that I like see on like at least a weekly basis. Yeah. And like it's most people don't. And I mean, that comes with its own set of traumas for me but like it, it it's we need to normalize a lot of things not normalizing kill yourself but like normalizing talking about you know mental health things and pain and yeah and make help more readily available to people mm -hmm. yep. and also to like take away some of the stigma like if it all fails like yeah. if everything fails and and you you reach that culmination of things mm -hmm. like maybe take away some of the stigma of it like because yeah. it's not your f fault really like you hurt you don't want to hurt anymore right you take tylenol right, right. like when you have an yeah. owie like i mean yeah there's and there's also still so much um insensitivity around it you know, mm -hmm. when someone says like, oh, why would they do that? They had a family. It's like, you you don't understand how this works, do you? <laughs> but, you know, we kept going for a really long time, probably because they did have a family. And then right. at some point, the scales tip. Exactly. So you, it's like, that is. Yeah. 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 There's so, so much more. Still so much insensitivity around it in, in general. So, mm -hmm. yep. You sold me, ma'am. I'm going to get that book. Thank you. I sold you on. You sold me. More and yep. more of it then. Pretty no, I much. think it'll be, I think it's going to be really, really amazing. I do too. Maybe we can talk about it. We can. Yeah. Get like totally pushed down by all the algorithms. But well, you know, okay. hey, hey. That's fine. Algorithms stop still being be dumb. Here. We're talking about things that actually happen in the real world of real people. I do like when I get like slapped on the wrist by youtube for talking about a book and having it be like this is explicit or this is like inappropriate in some way and i'm like no it's it's just a book like oh my gosh i'm not 
saying those things like to just say them we're talking about something in relation to something else but okay youtube yeah whatever get it together youtube all right all right my next one is how to say babylon a memoir by sophia sinclair i'm very excited to read this i so keep seeing that everywhere yeah thank you uh, this is from simon yeah simon ashisha thank you simon ashisha for sending this to me um it says this is a lyrical story of the author's struggle to break free of her rigid rastafari upbringing ruled by her father's strict patriarch patriarchal views and repressive control over childhood to find her own voice as a woman and poet uh some people that i really trust their you know opinions on books have said this is just such a wonderfully written memoir so i am really excited to get into this so this is out now it's out now how to say babylon this feels like a, an f patriarchy book too yes very much so mm -hmm. yeah we're down for that and anyway, so i double checked it. it is a non-fiction boom um i've talked about this once before stalking shakespeare um this came out back in april and so this is about a guy who's trying to find like an authentic um painting of shakespeare and it just i guess follows his whole journey through that and so you get like a lot of history on like art and shakespeare mm -hmm. and elizabethan times and all of that and it's it's not like very long but it's it's it sounds like it'll be like a nice just interesting fun read and i, yeah. I do really like shakespeare so like the basic bitch i am i like <laughs> shakespeare <laughs> oh. not a revolutionary um <laughs> opinion to have but no i think it's very interesting and i i do find the, um this idea that like because there's always this, there's this like thing around shakespeare about how like we don't know anything about him and we know quite a lot about him a lot hmm. <laughs> like, yeah we don't have um it's always this like discussion of like what is like what did he really look like and all that stuff mm -hmm. but like we do have those things and yeah so i always find the books or documentaries that go through those facts um interesting and i yeah. do enjoy, enjoy watching them or reading them uh same with like jane austen things Mm -hmm. who we have less stuff about i feel like because that lady like because her sister like burned half of her letters we do have lots of stuff we only have oh. like two portraits of her oh okay yeah i was not aware mm -hmm. i was not aware um they think right. about that but i always think about that stuff in like relation to today like yeah we have a yeah. lot of like documentation but once everything went digital do we really have a lot of documentation like does that become obsolete like what does how do you it's not going to be in a burial mound for you to pull out or like exactly how are we accessing things it's just on a cloud server yeah <laughs> you know like are we just losing from an archaeological standpoint like generations yeah. worth of like data i mean i don't know I, are they have they scanned everything and put it in the cloud like what's happening are there vaults we don't know about but how do you so even like, get to the cloud? Like what? Ha like in a hundred years, how are we getting to the cloud? Um, it's just can we get be to the cloud? Planted in us somehow. Can we get to the cloud? Does the cloud? I mean, you can't. Play, but it's like I think about it like when you get a new gaming system. Like I can't play my original Nintendo games on right. my Switch. I can't right. shove them in my Switch. So unless you make an upgrade, how am I? No, I have to believe that there are there's still like physical documentation. I do not think they would ever just rely on making this stuff a digital asset. I just don't believe that. We'll be dead, so we it. won't know. We sure won't know. <laughs> <laughs> These are the things that keep me up at night, Naomi. I just yeah. have thoughts. These are the nice thoughts. I can't oh, right. share the not These nice are the thoughts. Safe ones. These are the safe ones. <laughs> when we're all dead, how is anybody going to find out anything about us when it's all stuck on our phones? Yeah, it's a scary thought. It's a real scary thought. Mm -hmm. 
this next one I've had for quite some time, but I would like to read it this month. And it is Tulia, Race, Cocaine, and Corruption in a Small Texas Town Ooh. by Nate Blakesley. I have to read the inside of this because it's like when you hear it, you're like, what in the heck? So it says, early one morning in the summer of 1999, authorities in the tiny West Texas town of Tulia began a roundup of suspected drug dealers. By the time the sweep was done, over 40 people had been arrested, and one of every five black adults in town was behind bars, all accused of dealing cocaine to the same undercover officer, Tom Coleman. Coleman, the son of a well-known Texas Ranger, was named Officer of the Year in Texas. Not until after the trials in which Coleman's uncorroborated testimony secured sentences as long as 361 years did it become apparent that Tom Coleman was not the man he claimed to be. By then, two dozen people were in prison and the town of Tulia had, be had become a battlefield in the national debate over the war on drugs. Yeah. Interesting. Very much so. I feel like you've talked about that before or I would look I into it once. I did. Or both. <laughs> I, I, I think I talked about it our very first time when we did a no, nonfiction November. Thank oh, you. so that would be number four of a, of a book that I'm putting myself on blast for. Four books. Oh, Naomi. You're I know. so bad. I'm bad. I'm bad. We're both bad, though. I know. Um, And this is kind of like a wild card because I really, the, the other four I kind of feel like I will get to. Okay. This one I'm not sure because this is like much more like history, history, history. Um, but I'm very curious about it. I'm also very curious, but also don't want to know what this stain is on the back of this book that I bought secondhand. Um, but yikes! It it's She Wolves by Helen Castor, and it's about like cover. um the women who ruled England before Elizabeth I. Um, like because there were a bunch of queens. Um who some of them were only really queens for a very short period of time. Um, mm -hmm. But there were a lot of other queens that have, have ruled England and it's, they're interesting. And I read off of their head in September, August, and it talks about like basically why patriarchy sucks and how it sucked for like, 3,000 years um, but yeah. it talks about different women throughout history and so a lot of these women have come up uh, uh, that are mentioned okay. in here came up in that like but in like mostly like it, it it's such a short book yeah. and it, they're brief kind mentions. of like brief introductions to things mm -hmm. so I thought this would be like very interesting also yeah. I just like that like it gives voice you know to absolutely to people um who have been sort of written over, not out of, but right. like over in history and forgotten. Um, but there is this weird stain on the back, and I don't know what that is. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put that over there. I'm just I'm gonna, gonna find say, an alcohol swab, and I'm just gonna yeah. I'm just up. gonna say it's a burrito stain. Sh sure. You know, let's just go with that, that. That's fine. Just settle those nerves. It's just a burrito stain. That's you know. fine. I know I didn't put it on there, which is why it's unsettling. If it had been yes. my own stain, I would be like, Alyssa, you're gross. But right. it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just get that alcohol out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ooh. I only have two more. I thought we were I supposed have... to have five, Naomi. How can you have two oh, more? Oh, are we done? Oh. Okay. <laughs> can you count? This is what she does to me. I'm Check the Discord. I'll put the last two in the Discord. Do you want to do two more? Do you have two more? Not really. Okay, well, then we can cut it. I'll just add, I'll just. Throw I mean, in the I Discord. can pull out two. There's like three nonfiction books behind me. <laughs> this is what happens when I don't get enough sleep. I don't mm. follow instructions. You don't follow instructions <laughs> when you get sleep. Stop it. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> Okay, we're done with that. We're done with that, Naomi. Mm -hmm. We're done with that. Mm -hmm. That was our five. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll look, folks, join our Discord. I'll put the last two in the Discord. Literally, All right. how many are we going to do, Alyssa? Five each. Pills seven. You did say that. You, Pulls you, you, seven. Now that, you're, now that you're saying it, now I remember you saying it. But when I was pulling books at like 1 a.m. last night, I don't think I knew what I was doing. It's fine. It's fine. 
just reel me in like you do. I reel me in. Yeah. All right. So, it's a book recommendation time. It, Let me it uh, is. get and my piles I together. Ever know what book to recommend? I do not, but I do have one, which I've probably recommended a bunch of times before. But we're going to recommend it again because if you somehow have not read this, what are you doing? You should be reading this. Um, and that's in the Dream House by Carmen Maria, uh, Mariana, Maria March, Marchado. Carmen Maria Marchado. Ah, there we go. Um, so this is their memoir, and it uses this house as a vehicle to tell the their story of being in a like a queer domestic violence situation. I think oftentimes um, people feel like, oh, if you're in a, a queer relationship that there isn't this potential for domestic violence or mm -hmm. just a, abuse, uh, emotional abuse. Um, and it's very much something that happens and it kind of gets like glossed over a lot by authorities and society and stuff like that. So this is an incredibly moving and powerful and beautifully written memoir. It's a literary memoir. So it's not like, you know, straightforward. It's very, um, it uses this whole metaphor of the house and you're moving through the house as she tells the story. It's yeah. so good. It's so it's, it's hard to read and it's sad, but it's, like a must read. It's it's beautiful. I love this book so much. I should read that in November. I do have You that. should. You have to. I think it's there. I don't think it's in the attic. I think it's behind me. It's it's so good. Oh, it's so yeah. good. I may have to reread it. I haven't read it in a while. I didn't have a physical copy in the night. That this is I finally got one in a yeah. this book club box and I was super psyched to have it. I think I swapped it out for that too because it's just Wow. It's yeah. So I have I have to pull that out so that it's in front of my face. Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um I am going to recommend Time's Mouth by Eden Lupuki Lupucky. Lepucky? Lepucky. I'm not sure. I keep um, seeing that around. I really I have not seen it at all. Um uh, Thank you, Counterpoint, for this gifted copy. I um, I love this much more than I thought I would. Um, it sounded really interesting when I got their little, you know, list of books to choose from. I was like, oh, okay, oh, okay I'll give that a try. But this was such a mystical feeling book. I just, I really loved it. So we we meet Ursa, and she has a terrible home life just really awful and so she flees and she hooks up with this lady to stay with her in her house with her and her husband and uh the husband's ill and at some point the lady leaves she like goes to france or somewhere and she just basically leaves the house in the france care of ursa and um ursa you know hooks up with a guy finds herself pregnant and, and has a child and all of a sudden this 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 lady's home that Ursa and her son are now occupying, somehow other women who are like pregnant and in need or have children and are in need of like safe harbor come to Ursa because they've heard that she has these special gifts. So Ursa is able to somehow tap into whatever and like travel through her memories and in time. It's all very interesting. And she builds this community of women in this home and it's it almost feels very cultish it is it's very cultish because they rely on her they they need her they look up to her because also when she's in this gift when she's using her gift other things happen to these women that are in her presence so it's like whatever is going on with her something's also happening to the women that are in her immediate uh circle so it's very strange, but um, uh, as time goes on, the son gets older. Um, he falls in love with one of the girls there and things get a little weird. Things aren't as 
pretty as they seem, things have gotten a little bit more complicated. Ursa's powers um, have gotten a little bit out of control. And so her son and this girl decide to flee and start their own life. And so on goes the story. This book has like a lot to say about like mothers abandoning their children, especially their daughters. So like there's this thread along the whole book regarding mothers and like lost daughters. And it's very emotional. It's very deep, very mystical. And I was just like, so in this story, I just, I loved it so much. And um, I highly recommend it. Time's Mouth, out now. I was wondering what it was about because I feel like I, maybe I just feel like I've seen it everywhere because it was on, um, I think it was a, a, one of our liberal picks. Oh yes, it was. Yep. It sure was. And mm-hmm. so then I've seen it on, once it's a Libro pick, I feel like I see it places because mm-hmm. people start to listen to them obviously. And, and all of that. Um, so I just, it's interesting. It does yeah, sound it really, really good. good. I was wondering, I really was wondering, because I, I feel like when I looked at it on Libro, I was just kind of like, meh. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if I got it or not. I would have to look in my catalog. Um, but yeah, now that you're talking about it, it definitely sounds more interesting. Yeah. I, I liked it a lot. Too. I liked it a lot. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Well. Okay, so that's the episode. That is the episode. What are you all ready for nonfiction November? Any idea? Are you reading anything are, for nonfiction? Exactly. Are you? I know some people do not mess around with nonfiction at all. And you know what? That is your prerogative. You do not have to. But if you are, let us know what you're going to read. I had at least one friend who was after reading the Booker books was like, and I think I'm just going to read nonfiction from now on. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Really? Okay. Okay. They, they, I don't think they went whole hog into that, but yeah yeah it was a a feeling there was a vibe wow well i'm i'm kind of excited for nonfiction november i do need to go on the attic though because i want to get a couple of other books out of there so but um yeah four of these books will not be on the list for next year okay i can say that maybe there's no maybe there's no maybe now she's not drinking coffee you've got to... <laughs> i'm just saying i'm just saying oh all right all right okay we gotta wrap it Let's... up all right thanks for we gotta in. wrap it up yeah follow us everywhere tbr lowdown visit our website tbr lowdown.com that's gonna do for us we're out of here bye, bye.